my name is James Beckwith, and this is my story. I'm an explorer and adventurer by heart and by profession. I was born in Frederick County, Virginia in 1798. My mother was Miss Killer, a slave African woman. And my father was an Englishman, Sir Jenny Beckwith. Now it wasn't uncommon in those days for a master or owner to have children by his property, his slaves. But it was uncommon for that same master, that owner, to educate his children and also to claim the children as his own. That's exactly what my father did. In fact, my father went to court three times to sign a deed of emancipation to set me free. I'm so happy my father did this because it spared me from a life of slavery. Well, here go my story. Now, in the making of the American West, there were a lot of people involved, all kind of colors and ethnic groups. But to the best of my knowledge, I was the only black man who wrote down his story. You see, in those days, a lot of people could not read and write, especially black folks, because it was illegal to teach black people, kids or adults, to read and write. But my father had sent me to school, so I could read and write. When I still was a young lad, my folks moved to Missouri, St. Louis. And when I was there, they apprenticed me out to a blacksmith. Now, blacksmith is a fine profession. They taught you how to shoe horses and make wagon wheels and that sort of thing. But it wasn't for me, but I made the most of it until I was about 19. So I left home when I was 24. I mean, blacksmithing was a good job, but like I said, it wasn't for me. I had a venture in my heart. So I hired on with the crew that was going out to sign a treaty with the native people in the upper part of the Mississippi River for the lead mines. And my job was to hunt for game, food. So I love hunting, I love fishing, I love adventure. So we did great. We finally, we went to the lead mines, we signed the treaty, everything was great. Then I took off and I went down to New Orleans. That was fantastic too. New Orleans was a steaming city, had all kinds of different cultures there as well. But something once again was burning in me. I wanted to do more. So I found out about this mountain rendezvous where all the great mountain people were there. People like James Bridger and Jedediah Smith and Ed Rose. And what we did is we tested our skills, our skills at hunting and fishing and skinning animals and things like that. Not only did it hone our skills, but it enabled us to get money and, and food. Those things that would get us through those long, cold winters that we know we had to deal with in the Rockies. Throughout my many travels, I had great experiences with the native people, and some not quite so great. I saw the Grand Pawnee almost get wiped out by disease. I saw settlers attack those native people and I saw the native people attack the settlers. But my experience was always one of respect. I, I want to tell you about this time that a friend of mine, Black Harris and I, went to find this outpost called Eli on the Missouri River. Now we didn't even have horses, we had to walk. For nine days we were walking. All we had left was coffee and sugar. Now I was young and strong so it wasn't so bad, but Black Harris got really tired and weak. And one night we stopped, I found the elk, but let me tell you that beast was so foul we couldn't even eat it. So the next morning I told Black Harris I, I have to go and find help. And he begged me, please don't leave me, I'll die here. And I said, if we both stay here, we both are gonna die, I have to leave. So when I took off, I'd gone about a half a mile when I heard two shots, just like that. And I looked up, and there was two native people coming toward me. They must have thought I was dead, I was in such bad shape. Cause they got to me and said, are you dead? So I had enough strength to tell him my story. One of them took off to find Black Harris. And next thing I know, I must have passed out because the next thing I know, I woke up and they were feeding me little spoonfuls of food. They got us up, walked us around to get our strength back. And once they did that, they fed us the best feast I ever had in my life. Bear meat, venison. It was so wonderful. And to this day, that's the best fe feast I've ever had. That's why I said I've always had good experience with the Native people. These were the Osage people. Well, folks, let me tell you about another adventure that I had. I was hired on with a crew, about 37 men, to get them to the Rocky Mountain. Hunting, fishing, those kind of things. Now, I'd never been to bison country, buffalo country. And the first time I saw one when I shot it, I thought it was a bear. <laughs> and Ali is saying, you never seen a buffalo before? I said, no. I <laughs> I never had. And I'm gonna tell you, that was some good eating too. But in this trip, we started to run out of supplies and it got really bad. And then we got trapped by a snowstorm. So we were getting desperate by this time. 
The snowstorm had us trapped, and we didn't know what we were going to do. Just then, when all hope had faded, we saw seven natives riding toward us. And through our interpreters, we told them our story. They took us back to their camp, a huge camp. This was the Grand Pawnee. We got a chance to meet the famous Two Axes. The Two Axes was a brave, brave chief. He had once told President James Monroe that he would never sign a treaty with him because they never could be trusted to take care and honor the treaty. So we respected him. They fed us. But then they told us we couldn't leave for four days. We wondered why. He said because we were about to start a round. A round was when all the tribes surrounded a big herd of buffalo and they took care of all their needs, their food, their supplies, and their clothing for the next winter. It was a fantastic sight to see. And after those four days, we were able to leave. For many years, I was able to make a living as a hunter and a trapper, bringing home beaver pelts and bear skins. But you know, things change. People fashion change. So when that went out of style, I moved to California and became a gold miner of sorts and worked in the California territory. And then when that didn't pan out quite so well, I came back to Colorado and went to work for the Bent Brothers. And down there, I was a, a trader and interpreter because I had learned many languages. In fact, one time I was out with my friend Jim Bridger and I was captured, or rather adopted, by the Crow people, known as the Sparrow people as well. For seven years, I lived with them and became a minor chief. They said I was their long lost son. It was an amazing adventure. When I was about 61, I moved back to this place now called Denver City. A friend of mine asked me to come back and run his place, and I was happy to because I loved Colorado. Now, my reputation was a man of integrity and respect. So there were some things going on in Denver City that was not nice. The native people were not treated fairly. So I had to put a stop to that. And also, black people weren't still weren't respected at that time. This one story was there was a group that livestock got loose and tore my stables. And I asked them to repair, to pay me for the damages. They refused. I had eventually to pull my gun on them and force them to do it. I didn't like doing it, but I had to do it. My whole life, I try to live with honor and respect. And I hope that you do the same. I hope you get out there and explore this great country, like I did, like James Beckworth did. And have a great time doing it, okay? Thank you, that's my story, and thank you for listening to me.